Okay, now we're going to get into a little bit more detail uh, about the curve sketching process. The first part of the curve sketching process is just finding the intervals of increasing and decreasing and the pieces that are attached to that. And how you do that is you, you have an original function, right? You have an original function. When you take the derivative, derivative of that function and set it equal to zero and factor it, you end up with one or two, maybe there's one or maybe there's two, maybe there's even three x values. Well, you're going to use those x values, and I'll, I'll show you on a slide in a minute, that between those x values, that's going to create, so I'm going to do this. So look it, we have, this is increasing, and that goes, I'll call that x1. So x is equal to x1. There's that interval. Well, that interval right there, that is negative infinity to x1. Then we've got this interval. Well, that interval going down goes from x1 to x2. I'll call that right, th this right here, x2. There's that interval. And then there's the final interval. Um, whoops. From the x2 right here, this is now increasing. So you have x2, and then it it's increasing all the way to infinity. So there are your three intervals. Well, that happens because of the first derivative. And then because of those three intervals, we now have these two critical points. That's what they're called. When the behavior changes from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing, this point right there is called a critical point. And that's where there's a min or a max highlighted by the tangent line that's horizontal, which means the tangent line, so m tangent is equal to zero. All right, so that's the first derivative, deals with increasing, decreasing, and critical points. The second derivative deals with the concavity. And the concavity is the curviness of the graph. So we're not looking at the line itself, but we're looking at the caves that are created. And then from where to where do they have that shape of a cave? Well, so let's follow, let me do this. From here to here, so for, and I'll call that x sub a since the other ones. So from negative infinity, to x sub a, this is concave down, and I'll indicate that with three negative signs. And then this interval from x sub a, and it continues, the rest of the graph is going to be concave up. So from x sub a to positive infinity, it's concave up, and I'm going to put three plus signs, and yes, you need to do this on your graphs. For those of you who don't like showing work, yes, you need, you need to do those. And so for this, we're identifying intervals of curve change. And by the way, there's also going to be a number line for that. So see how this says second derivative? Well, you're gonna set the second derivative equal to zero, and then you're gonna figure out what are the x values so in this case, we just had one. So on the number line, there would just be one. We'd call that x sub a. And then here's your two intervals. Well, we said on this one, this interval was concave down and this interval was concave up. And this point right there, because it switches from concave down to concave, so it goes like this, concave down to concave up. 
that point right there, at some point, while, while it's curving from down to up, that's called an inflection point. So um, you identify whether the intervals are concave up or concave down, and at what point, at what is that x value where there's a possible inflection point, and then you plug that x value into the original function, not to the second derivative, but into the original function to get the y value of that inflection point. All right, that's it for this one, and then I'll show you, I'll we'll show you the table and we'll do a couple of examples.